Are we overbuilding our AI systems in the cloud? I think we are. Let's talk about it. So welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider uh, YouTube channel and podcast where we talk about the truth of cloud computing and the ability to make AI work in the cloud. Let's get going. So this kind of came out of a uh, article I did about 30 days ago on InfoWorld, and I'll go ahead and post it below uh, so you can take a look at it. But basically looking at the overbuilding of the over-engineering of some of the AI systems that I'm seeing that are being built in the cloud. And so in other words, I think in many instances that we're overbuilding these systems, over-provisioning the cloud resources that they need, where they're going to end up being far too expensive to operate based on the fact that we're attaching just too many things and we're making these things way too complex than they really need to be. So you, you got to consider the fact that everybody's excited about the generative AI trends that are going on, even though we're having some issues in finding some of the right use cases out there, at least from the CIOs that I hear. So in other words, they, they understand that it's very innovative and it's very cool technology. They want to make use of it. And so they're looking around and trying to figure out how to make use of it and where to find the use cases. So, the fact is, is that uh, we have a lot of architects who were once cloud architects who are getting into the AI system architecture stuff and not necessarily having a lot of experience in building AI systems. But, you know, keep in mind, we've been building AI systems since the 60s. It's not necessarily new technology. The use of machine learning and the extensions of generative AI technology on top of that are pretty new. And so... We're still trying to figure out how to optimize the technology solution to make these work uh, in an optimized way. In other words, the ability to use a minimum viable configuration that's going to be able to run the AI systems that we need to run in the cloud, but spend the least amount of money, therefore returning the most amount of value back to the business. So what are the causes of over-engineering and over-provisioning? Well, it involves designing overly complex solutions by adding features that do not provide substantial value. So it's inefficient use of resources, you know, such as time, money, materials. Also, uh, you know, in the case of cloud computing, it would be storage compute systems using GPUs when CPUs would do just fine or, and over-building uh, and over-provisioning resources for using in the system. Complex complexity is also an issue. It can lead to the de decreased in productivity, higher cost, and reduced system resilience, and the availability of a vast array of services on public cloud platforms ultimately make it easy for the AI designers to include multiple resources, databases, storage systems, compute systems, things like that. So in other words, the use of cloud computing uh, is the path of least resistance to building these AI systems. However, it also provides very easy provisioning of resources that end up being pretty expensive. So just the ease of provisioning, the fact of the matter, we don't have to buy a storage server and then put it inside our data center. We can just go ahead and press a button uh, on a cloud provider and provision the resources that we need. And many cloud providers are providing uh, the ability to provision collections of resources. That's kind of the easy button for AI. But we're finding that the the resources that they're provisioning are going to be very expensive to operate, and probably many of them aren't going to be needed. So that's the problem. So the simplicity of provisioning services in the cloud has both benefits and drawbacks. Obviously, the benefits would be we can build uh, AI system fairly quickly, and cloud computing is probably the path of least resistance, as I mentioned earlier in building these AI systems, but it also encourages adding unnecessary, unnecessary components that drive up the cost in building and operating these systems. And often it results in a patchwork system where every additional service increases complexity and cost without a corresponding benefit. In other words, we're allocating resources, we're allocating too many resources, we're building systems that are overly complex uh, and that are going to cost too much to operate. And that's kind of the theme of everything we're talking about here. A specific example is the frequent overuse of GPU configured compute services. Um, despite their expense, GPUs are often included in generative AI architectures, even when CPUs would be a better choice. And so I'm seeing this a ton. So in other words, GPUs, by the way, are, are very high powered processors. They're great. Uh, in many instances and in, in driving some of these AI systems out there, but they're not always needed. And I think uh, we have a, a video here 
and I'll go ahead and add it uh, to, um, I'll add it up here. You can click on where you can look at uh, using alternatives to GPUs and specifically CPUs in many instances. So we're le always leveraging GPUs. Certainly when they're not needed, we're going to be overpaying for the AI system that we're building in the cloud. And, and that seems to be uh, an epidemic right now. So everybody wants to leverage GPUs for their AI systems. Uh, no compromising on that. And, and even in looking at these things as being very underpowered tactical uses of AI, not necessarily needing GPUs. The um, push to always leverage GPUs when CPUs are gon gonna work just fine uh, is something that's going on out there. So we're wasting a lot of money and also wasting a lot of power. GPUs use more electricity, they cost more to run, they're uh, resource hogs. So what are the financial penalties that we're paying here? Well, failure to control over engineering leads to escalating costs tied to the complexity and number of cloud services used. And the tendency is to include more resources than necessarily, not only increases the expense of the system, but also adds to the technical debt. In other words, technical debt would be the ability to kind of build something inefficiently now and knowing that it's being built inefficiently now, and that in essence becomes the debt, with the assumption being made that it's going to be corrected at some point in time in the future. The problem is, is that point in time never comes. People don't correct the problem. And so the technical debt, as we saw with lots of cloud systems that were built you know, 10, 15 years ago, are in essence being uh, pushed and pushed and pushed. So fragmented data across various services can off often further hinder data integration optimization, reducing return on investments. In other words, we have a data complexity issue that's coming up as well. We're leveraging very different systems. So we're leveraging multiple databases, multiple AI engines, multiple compute services. And that not only leads to overutilizing additional resources, but it also leads to a uh, complex environment. And it's gonna be cost more and it's gonna take more time and it's gonna cost more security problems to operate something that's gonna be overly complex as well as over-engineered and overbuilt. So how can we mitigate this risk? What are the mitigation strategies here? Well, to avoid the pitfalls of over-engineering, enterprises should adopt um, a few strategies. Need to prioritize core needs. Focus on the essential functionalities to meet the primary objectives and avoid unnecessary features. So in other words, building something that's not needed that we may think is gonna be needed at some point in time in the future, however, we don't have an existing requirement for it, uh, is going to lead to more cost. It's gonna to lead to more over-engineering, over-complexity and overbuilding the systems. Thoroughly plan and assess your system. Invest the time and planning phase to evaluate which services are going to be absolutely necessary. Start small and scale, scale gradually. Uh, begin with the minimum viable product, uh, focusing on core functionalities before scaling up. So in other words, we don't have to build everything that we think we're going to need. We can start with the minimum viable array of technology that we need to build the system, and we can scale up from there. There's always going to be the ability to add technology. It's going to be very difficult if we build systems around a configuration of technology uh, when it's too... Uh, too expansive, we're paying too much money for it to reduce it down. It's easier to scale up than it is to reduce down. Keep that in mind. And then finally, select an experienced AI architecture team. And this is probably the most important thing. I'm teaching an AI architecture class, uh, lots of uh, uh, LinkedIn learning videos out there on architecture. Uh, get good at architecture. And you should choose a team that shares an approach for leveraging only necessary resources. So in other words, they're taking a lean approach to building their architecture. They're not throwing everything at it. They're not managing by magazine or managing by a podcast and you know, getting behind the hype uh, around the generative AI stuff. Um, they're not using a single uh, hyperscaler for everything. They're looking at a configuration of best of breed of technologies that they're able to apply to the solution and using the minimum viable system, the ability to bring the most value uh, back to the business by creating a configuration that's going to be, in essence, lean and mean, the ability to solve the issue. And, you know, this is highlighting the, the importance of cost-effective planning, and that's really what it comes down to. What we're talking here about here is being a little bit more pragmatic in how we're looking at the technologies and how we're leveraging them in an effective way. And that's not hard to do. Uh, the easiest thing in the world to do is just go ahead and pick an architecture and pick everything and anything that you think is going to be needed for the AI deployment. 
that's often not going to be correct. The ability to build something up that's pragmatic, the ability to simplify the architecture, the ability to not over-engineer, not to overbuild, is going to be the secret to all of this stuff. So it takes thoughtful planning, judicious service selection, continuous optimization, ultimately, and that's key to building an efficient and cost-effective AI solution. And we need to work on that out there, or else this stuff's going to cost too much. We're going to run out of budget. We're going to run out of power. <laughs> We're going to run out of servers. Uh, we have to be a little bit more pragmatic in how we build this stuff. Keep that in mind. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also comment below. Let me know about the topics that you want to hear on this channel. Uh, and also let me know what you're doing and how you're working your cloud computing projects. Also, don't forget about my LinkedIn learning courses, also my InfoWorld blog, and also my uh, course out on Go Cloud Careers. Uh, that's a fully long-form mentored generative AI architecture course, and we're having a lot of fun out there and, uh, and trying to figure stuff, stuff out, very much like we talked about during this, uh, during this video. So anyway, you guys take care. Be safe. I'll see you next week. Cheers.